Before we move on, I also want to talk briefly about the ray tracing settings, as I mentioned in the beginning. We created this post-process volume earlier, and as I said, everything within this volume will be affected by these settings. If you have infinite extent enabled, everything within this scene will be affected. And besides those like kind of visual effect settings that you have up here and the color grading options you have down here, you do also have access to the most common rendering settings within Unreal Engine. These include the ray tracing settings that we want to look at a bit more. When we created the scene, we had ray tracing enabled, and that means Unreal Engine has already activated the most common ray tracing features for us. So for example, ray tracing ambient occlusion is enabled, and reflections are set to ray tracing, and a few other options within here. Also, our rectangular lights that we've created, uh, they cast ray traced shadows, which you can see here how the shadow is feathering out depending on the distance from the object. At the same time, ray tracing also introduces noise from time to time, so you might have to troubleshoot if you get noise in certain areas. For example, in our scene right now, I can see quite a bit of flickering around here. And this is due to the low sample settings on the area lights. So each light has independent settings from each other when it comes to the ray tracing samples. You can find those under ray tracing samples per pixel. I'm going to dial all of those up to four. And then we can see that the noise in the front of the rock is actually gone. Another feature that Unreal does not activate automatically is ray tracing global illumination. And that is mainly because ray trace GI is quite a performance killer. So you have to be careful when using it and have to play around with the settings and you have to decide if it's actually worth it. If we're creating a still image as we are doing here right now, um, it's not really our concern to keep this performant as it doesn't matter for a still image. So let me turn this on and choose brute force and you can immediately see that the inside of the tubes is brightening up as those rays are bouncing around more now. I can also increase those bounces and I can also increase the samples per pixel if I see some noise happening somewhere. Just be really careful with those settings. If you dial them up too high, you might cause a crash or your whole scene might freeze. You also have a setting for the samples per pixels in the ray tracing reflections tab. Um, as I can see noise happening here on those copper surfaces, I want to crank up those samples per pixels for the ray tracing reflections as well. And setting those onto four reduces the noise and this looks a lot cleaner now. 